personal finance practice problem using Excel. Life insurance using personal financial statements. Part number six, mortgage calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank sheet in prior presentations and we're continuing on with it now. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice, and blank. Example tab, in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information on the left-hand side, calculations on the right. We started out putting together the personal financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, two formats of the income statement on an accrual, in essence, or cash basis method. We looked at methods one and two for calculating the life insurance based on that information. Now we're gonna add another component and that's gonna be the loan amortization table so that we can then use all of those components to get to some more nuanced type of calculations, breaking out the life insurance needs that we might have on a year by year basis, possibly looking into life insurance that has kind of a declining uh, death benefit, for example, as we get closer and closer later on in life in accordance with these calculations. So here we're gonna focus in on the annuity calculation, which you may be able to get from your financial institution or they or you might be able to do an online calculator to do it and there's many out there I'm not advertising any one of them so but here's an example of one of them however I would use these as more of a tool to help us in our worksheet because I'd like to get the information into the worksheet for a couple different reasons one is that I would like to break this information down into a year by year calculation instead of a month by month calculation and two, if I was to change anything for estimates, I can change this on the left-hand side with just changing the data and we can tie this information number three into our other kind of calculations that we're making for the life insurance more easily looking and using formulas. So that's what we'll do here. The second tab is the practice tab. It has a pre-formatted worksheet so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab, a blank tab, which we will do the Excel formatting in. So I'm gonna go all the way to the right to, to add some more space. I wanna have a, a small double A and that's gonna be where we're gonna start our information. I'm gonna put my cursor on the skinny W so that we can copy it, format, uh, home tab, format painter, taking the paintbrush and making a skinny double A, skinny double A. And then we're gonna say that, uh, let's just reformat the information over here. So I'm gonna say when you're gonna need the loan amount, the rate, the years, and then the payments, which I'm just gonna pull from our data set on the left using formulas. So we have it right next to our, our data that we are working in to build our tables. Now note, obviously you might have some years that have passed within the loan when you're trying to do your life insurance calculation. So you might try to take your loan balance, for example, and start from that point forward to kind of construct say your amortization table from there using the online tools and possibly the table provided by your your uh, loan institution, your financial institution to help you uh, with your calculations or give you double check on the calculation. So I'm gonna imagine we have a loan currently on the books. I'm gonna say this equals, I'm gonna go all the way to the left to pull it from my data set. If you don't have the data set, you can obviously just build the loan from scratch. And we're gonna go down here and I said we had a loan on the books. It's actually from the balance sheet. Let's pull it from the balance sheet. We said it was on the books here, the mortgage of 150,000. We've got the rate is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna go all the way to the left and scroll down to the bottom. I said the rate was down here somewhere. There's the inflation rate. Mortgage rate is 6%, we're gonna say. Enter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that that is gonna be a percent. We need to percentize that. So home tab, number, percentify it. Now, obviously, if you have an adjustable mortgage or something like that, it could be a little bit more complex of a calculation. We're assuming a fixed rate mortgage. The number of years, I'm gonna say equals, and I put that on the data somewhere on the left, scrolling down to the data. We said it was a 20 years left on the mortgage. I'm gonna say enter. If you don't have the data, you could just compile your data over here. And then the payments. I'm gonna recalculate the payments. This is one way you can kind of double check yourself. So if you have this information proper up top, and then you can recalculate the payment and if that ties into what your payment is that it actually is you can kind of double check it if you already have like the mortgage set up and you're like 10 years into a 20-year mortgage or something like that so i'm going to do that by saying negative 
PMT, there's our payment calculation. Double click on the payment calculation or say shift nine. We want the rate, which is the 6%. So I'm gonna click on the 6%, but that's the yearly rate. And we want the monthly rate. So I'm gonna divide it by 12, comma, the number of periods we're gonna say is 20, 20 years remaining, but that is in years and we want it in months. So we're gonna times 12, comma, and then the present value is the current loan amount, which is the 150,000 and enter. That gives us the 1,075 about, it's rounded. We could double check that with the online calculator if we wanted to. I could say online calculator, 150,000. We've got the 20 year. We're gonna say 6% at the rate. Run it, online calculator. There, we got it at the 174.65. I can make the amortization table, for example, and there we have it. But the amortization table is broken out by year and I can't as easily work it into my worksheet. So I still think it would be better to use this as a double checking tool as opposed to uh, the not put doing it in Excel, right? So I'm gonna do it in Excel. So now we're gonna create the amortization table in Excel, and then we'll break it out on a year by year calculation using pivot tables and formulas so that we can use that for our more complex life insurance calculation, possibly a declining term life insurance. It's gonna be great. So I'm gonna select these four first or whatever the four, I don't, there's more than four, but I'm gonna go to the home tab, font group, border and blueitize those drop down if you don't have that blue it's down here more colors standard blue there it is and then i'm going to make a skinny ad by going to the the uh this one i'm going to say home tab uh format painter and then ad add and then the next one so we're going to say this is going to be our headers i'm going to start one cell down on the headers because i'm going to have a couple headers that need two cells so I'm gonna say year, month, payment. I'm doing this quickly because we have seen this in the past, but I think it's useful. To, it's a useful tool. These amortization tables, great practice. Interest, and then here's where I'm gonna have two lines, loan decrease. Now notice I didn't wrap the text. I could put that on one cell and then go to the home tab alignment and wrap the text, but I don't like to do that unless I'm gonna make a table out of it, which we will do, we'll make a pivot table, but I could still make the pivot table without it. I don't like doing it because it makes everything else messed up or widens the, the row for everyone else. And I don't, why mess everyone else up just for that one column name? It's not fair to the whole, to the whole column, everyone else that has to use that column. You see what I'm saying? So I don't like doing that. So I'm gonna do this one too, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna select this whole thing, and we'll make that our our header row, home tab, font group. We'll say it's gonna be black and white, and I'm gonna center I'm gonna center it. So there we go, that looks good. And then I'm gonna select these two and make them a little bit more skinny, skinny them up. Those two, putting my cursor in between them, skinny those up. There we go, and then we got 20 years. So if I say 20 times 12, that's 240. Uh, periods that we need. So I'm going to say, okay, we got, we're going to start at period zero, one, two, I need 240 of them. I'm going to select three of them, put my cursor on the fill handle, and I'm just going to grab that fill handle, make sure I got a good grip, a good grip on it, because I'm going down to 240 periods, 240, just driving it down there with the fill handle, 240. 240 right there that's the, that's where we need it center it alignment and center that looks good and then i'm going to do the year by year calculation with a little bit of a fancy little fancy trick here i'm going to say it's going to be equals round up round up and i'm going to say i want to take round up function and i'm going to take the number of the month and i'm going to divide it by 12 12 months in a year so as long as that's above a zero it'll it'll round it'll round everything in the first 12 months up to one is the idea if we can get it to round to the right digit which i gotta do by saying comma which digit is it you gotta say it's negative 0.1 that tells excel that you're rounding it to a whole number so i'm going to say brackets and enter let's double check it by saying there's no decimals on it that looks good 
and then I'm just gonna double click on the fill handle and that should take it all the way down. Let's see if it does what we want. So now I've got one for month one, one year one, year one, year one, and then year two on 13. That looks like it's doing what we want, year two for 13. This is important for like pivot tables and other types of tables because you want to have a populated cell on each one of them to have it properly formatted in case you didn't know that. So I'm going to scroll up top. Now you know it. That's what I'm here for. That's what I do. I tell people stuff they need to know and stuff they don't need to know. Plus, possibly most stuff they don't need to know, but still some stuff that's useful. Alignment, I'm gonna center this whole thing. And then we're gonna go to the loan balance and let's pull over the loan balance of the 150,000 on period zero. Payment calculation is always gonna be the same, 1,075 all the way down. So I'm gonna say this will be equal to the 1,075. That's rounded by the way. I don't want it to move when I copy it down. So I need to make that an absolute reference or a mixed reference, but an absolute is easier. So F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the AC, a dollar sign before the four and enter. And then the interest calculation is simply gonna be equal to the 150,000 times the rate, which is 6%, but that's a yearly rate. And we're just talking about a month right here on the interest. Don't get, don't get crazy on a loan person, financial institution. It's really that divided by 12. So that's gonna give us the 750. So if we're paying 1,075 equals 1,075 and 750 is going out the door, it's going to interest. We're not gonna see that again. It's not decreasing our principal. It's just the rent in essence, the interest. That gives us the 325. That means the loan is gonna go down equals the 150 minus the 325. There it is. Let's do one more just for the fun of it. One more time, the, the Payment is gonna remain the same, 1,075. I want to be able to copy that down. So I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the AC and the four tab. Interest is now calculated at the 149, 675. Now a new number, therefore we're gonna get new interest calculation times the 6%, but that's a yearly calculation. And also note that that is outside of our table here. And therefore I need to make it an absolute reference. So when I copy it down, it doesn't move down. I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the AC and the two, and then I'm gonna divide it by 12, which I can hard code because 12, there's always 12 months in a year. It's not gonna change. I can hard code, otherwise just type it in, otherwise known as just typing it in. So then I'm gonna say this equals the 175 minus the 748. That gives us a decrease in the loan balance of the 326. And then the new loan balance is the prior loan balance, the 149, 675 minus the 326, giving us the 149, 349. Let's select those four and see if we can just copy that down as easy as possible. And the easy way to do it is I can just double click the fill handle button. I'm calling, I'm not even calling it a handle now. It's just a button, even though they don't call it a button, but now it kind of is because you could just double click on it like a button. And then if it brings us down to zero at the end of the day or at the end of 240 days or the, at the end of 20 years, then that's an indication that we have done things properly. And so you can see that I have an indication that I've done things properly here. So then I'm gonna select this whole thing because it's zero. And we just clarified that that's an indication that things are done properly. I'm gonna take this whole thing and then I'm gonna make it blue and bordered. We're gonna go to the home tab, font group, border and blueitize it if you don't have that blue by the way it's over here in the more colors standard that blue right there that's the one i use you don't have to use that blue you can use whatever makes you happy uh, but don't piss off your supervisor if it doesn't make them happy because you gotta you gotta be a team player here people you gotta be a team player anyways this is my life insurance i'll make it whatever this is my mortgage loan calculation i could do it the way I want to do it. So this is gonna be, so you can use this as kind of like a double check on this side. So we got the 149, 675, 149, 675 on the first payment. So then we're gonna, we're gonna break this down on a year by year payment because that will probably be more useful when we're trying to figure out it with relation to our life insurance. I might wanna say, hey, can I set up my life insurance so that it ties to the ending balance, the liability possibly as time passes? Uh, and so we might want to use something like that. So to do that, 
I want to I want to break this out and say, well, what, where am I standing at the end of each year, not the end of each month? Okay, so I'm going to do that with a formula basis, and then we'll use the pivot tables to do the same stuff. I'm going to select the skinny column over here because I want a skinny AK, AK, the skinny AK, which stands for that column, AK, the column. So I'm going to go to the home tab and then paint brushy it and then go to AK, AK, the column. And then I'm going to select these cells, copy them, put them in AL, OW, good old OW. It's good to see you, OW. And then we're going to, I'm going to delete the month, the AM, because I don't like waking up in the AM. So I'm going to right click and then delete that. So there, <laughs> but now I got another AM. AM doesn't go away still. I tried to get rid of it, but no, it's still there. So then I'm going to select these two. Let's, let's take the years and make that a little bit skinnier. And then we'll say our years are going to be one to 20. So we could start at zero, zero, one, two, down to 20. Selecting those three, taking the fill handle, grabbing it, grabbing it, getting a grip on it and going down to 20, 20 years. And then we'll center that alignment and center, boom. And then the balance, the balance we need up top, I'll start at period zero. Loan balance is simply that 150. And then the payments will start at period number one. So what I'd like to do is use an ifs function and I want it to sum up everything that's in year one, which is gonna be these 12, eight, uh, 90, which is fairly easy to calculate because that one, of course, the payments are the same, but the interest is different. So that's why you can see this is important. This is important. So I'll do it first. Let's do the payments first equals the ifs. I, and you can use the if function, the if, um, wait a second, wait a second. We want to say this equals the sum if. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. And there's two of them. There's the regular one, but the one with the S I think is the newest one. You can use either one, but I think this is probably the newer, the and more improver one. So <laughs> it looks more like the other one. So anyway, another one just like the other one. Sum range, so the sum range is gonna be this one. I'm just gonna select the entire range because there's nothing underneath it. So I'll just pick up the whole thing. And then I'm gonna say comma. And then the criteria range is this one because everything with a one is the one that we wanna sum up the stuff in the sum range. So I'm just gonna select the whole AE column and then comma, the criteria is this one. So in other words, we're saying, hey, look, if you see that one in the criteria range here, then I want you to sum up not the criteria range, but the sum range. That's how, that's how, that's what we're saying to Excel, but we're saying it like in Excel ease. That's like the Excel language, so they can understand it. Let's do it a couple more times and then we'll try to format it so we can copy it across and down. This equals the sum ifs, sum ifs. Let me tell you the, the when you sum Excel so you know, sum range, the sum range is gonna be now the interest column. I'm just gonna select the whole column and then criteria, you wanna sum that, but only Excel, only if the criteria range here is this one. So you gotta like look at the criteria and then match it to the criteria, which is the next comma, which is this one. So if you see that one in the criteria range, then you wanna sum up the other range known as the sum range, the related sum range. And enter, let's do it one more time. We're gonna say this equals the sum if with an S brackets. This time the sum range is now the loan decrease and the AI column, comma, the criteria range remains the same. And then comma, the criteria is once again one and enter. So there we have it. So now I'm gonna delete those three because the last one's a little bit different, but I'm gonna delete those two and I'm gonna try to make this first one so I can copy it both down and across using fanciness. So I'm gonna double click on it and say, okay, for this first one, the sum range, that's this one. I want that to move to the right when we go to the right and it should be okay to copy it down because I, I made the whole column, which isn't like exactly the prop most proper thing to do, but it's, I think it'll work here because there's nothing underneath it. Criteria range is gonna be this, this one. Now this one, I don't want it to move when I move right. So I'm just gonna say F4, make it an absolute reference on the whole thing, dollar sign before the first part and the second part. 
and so that's good and then this one the criteria i want it to move down like it normally would but i don't want it to move to the right when i copy it to the right so that's the letters not the numbers i want the numbers to change but not the letters so al al you got to stick to al al's a good guy you've got to make sure that that one i'm going to put a dollar sign so you don't go don't leave al and go to and go to the am because then you got to wake up early if you go to column am and we don't like doing that so we're going to keep it there and so then that's a mixed reference by the way and then enter and then i'll put my cursor on it and i'll go to the fill handle and drag it to the right and see if it does what we think it should do and i think it i think it did do what we think it should do right that looks right and then i'll select these three and click the fill handle button double click on it i should say and it brings it on down bring it on down to 20 years how come is it shouldn't it and then yeah that's right so then so so obviously this interest now like we could check it like if i add up these interests there it is and that comes out to the 8891 that looks good this number should be the loan decrease for the years one everything with a one in it and that comes to the 4005 that's good now the loan balance needs to be the minimum so this is a little different but it's similar equals sum if I'm sorry, it's the min, min if. I want you to take the smallest number ifs. And you only have the one with an S, not the other one this time. And so the ra the min range is gonna be this one. I want you to take the smallest number in that range, Excel is what I'm telling you, comma. But that's the min range. But the criteria range, you're gonna you're gonna do it only if looking at the criteria range, there's the criteria, and you find in that criteria range the criteria, comma, which is that number one. So if you find that number one, the criteria in the criteria range over here, then you sum not that range, not summing, then you find the smallest number not in that range, but in the in the in the in the min range, in the min range, which for year one should be this last one down here, the 145995. So hopefully I said that right and didn't confuse anyone. So then I'm going to double click on the fill handle button and bring that on down, bring it on down. And at the end of the day, or at the end of, of uh, 20 years, it should be zero. It's 240 days, I think, is what it was. So the total, then if I sum up the bottom line, we're at the bottom line, sum it up. Why are you giving me all this crap? Why don't you just give me the bottom line, okay? Because that's too general. You need more than the bottom line, I'm telling you. People always just want the bottom line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one and drag it across. You can't make a decision just on the bottom line all the time, I gotta tell you. I hate to say it. People people lie about the bottom line because you don't look at the stuff that was above the bottom line. And then you don't know if the bottom line was even right, right? And then, and then you're making decisions on the wrong bottom line. Any case, I'm gonna select this whole thing, home tab, font group, and we'll put a border and blue around it. So there we got it. Now then we can do the same thing with a pivot table and that's even easier so i but i can't use these two headers so i'm going to select the whole table with the, just the one header column and then i'm going to go all the way down to the 20 years now just just throw in a pivot table no problem i go to the insert tab and i just say pivot table right there i just want to throw it in. what happened that's the recommended pivot table i want to go just to a normal pivot table i'm going to hit the button not the drop down and then I'm going to go to the existing worksheet. I'm just going to put it into the existing worksheet. It says, which cell do you want to put it in? That's what Excel is asking. That's the location. I'm going to say, it's that cell, Excel, that cell, Excel. And I just say, okay, and boom, pivot table. So I'm going to add the years. That's It's going to go into the values because it has a value in it. I need to drag that over to the rows because I got 10 years on the left now. I don't want the months. I want the payment. I want the interest. I want the a decrease I want the balance all that stuff I want and it defaults to summing it up just like we saw up top so that's correct for everything except the last one where I want to take the min thing and then it's got this ugly formatting the general formatting that we'll fix right here by just going to the drop down I'm gonna do this fast because we've seen it before but I'll, I'll try not to go too fast we're gonna go to the value and then it says sum I'm gonna go to the number formatting currency bracketed numbers no dollar sign decimal down down okay okay that was too fast okay i'll do it again this time for the sum of the interest we're going to hit the second one drop down value field settings 
it's on the sum that's right number format currency bracketed numbers dollar sign gone decimal down down okay okay that was still too fast okay we'll do it again this time so just so because i went too fast last time on the third column drop down field value setting number format currency brackets dollar sign gone decimal down down okay okay all right i think i got it that time well this one's gonna change here what it's gonna change just a little bit it's a little different for this last one because it's defaulting to the sum and we want to make it the min this time as you recall from our calculations up top so then the rest is the same yeah i guess that's okay then currency brackets dollar sign gone decimal down down okay okay so there we have it and this should mirror basically what we did before up top another way you can do it i'm going to select these from al from al to app al to app and make them a little skinnier so now we've got this table which can help us with our with our calculations on the life insurance now because we can say okay maybe i want to tie my life insurance to the to the loan balance and maybe i want to think about how i can get life insurance that might have a decreasing death benefit as i live longer because i'm hoping that i pay off my loan and therefore if i was to die that uh i could i could leave my whoever's dependent upon me uh, with enough money to pay off the loan and possibly get a more affordable life insurance uh, policy by by having a premium that basically decreases over time and we can work that into the calculation we might also kind of consider obviously what the cash flow is so when you're thinking about the the life insurance we might first think hey look i want to just have enough cash flow to be paying off the life insurance for example i mean paying off the loan in the same way it is structured over the life of the loan that's one way we can kind of think of it or we might say hey look i would like to structure my life insurance in such a way where they can basically pay off for example uh the mortgage and try to think about what the ending balance would be as part of the life insurance calculation so in future presentations we'll get into a bit more nuanced calculation for the life insurance and try to figure out what you know what the cash flows are on a year by year basis and possibly think about more complex life insurance kind of structures where we can maybe have a declining uh, balance and think about whether or not we can have life insurance that has a declining uh, balance as we live longer given the fact that hopefully we'll have less liability over that time and less need for uh, a cash flow for the people dependent upon us for our current cash flow.